Fans of the Horus Heresy, thank you very much for joining me for another review of alternative resin miniatures for use in Imperial and Cult Militia lists. Uh, and here we have something, this is actually a blast from the past here, and as far as I can tell, a very rare set of models. So the 10 guys we have in front of us um, are from a game from the um, early 90s, if I recall correctly, called Cryomech. Uh, which was produced by Grendel um, and is now owned by, I believe, Scotia Grendel. And uh, Crimec was very much a game of, it was very aliens inspired. Um, and it also got into the sort of uh, the themes of biological or alien and a, a future conflict of an alien race who used biological technology as opposed to the humans, which portrayed by using. Um, manufactured technology so the aliens grew their guns so you know there's a parallel with tyrannies now there's an interesting you could probably look at the dates when crime was published and compare and contrast to uh, warhammer 40,000 tyrannies and seeing which came first um but yeah it was, it was an interesting game at the time um and it had it had a, a good miniature range and towards the end of when the original production or the original availability of the game, um, a set of this set of ten um, models was released, and unusually and very unusually for the time, they were cast in resin. Now, I only ever saw a handful of these on sale, and indeed, I uh, I only just managed to get the last one that was for sale in um, in my in the local store I'm, and I think I bought these from Virgin Megastore, if I remember rightly. Yes, it was Virgin Megastore, so that's going back a bit, isn't it? Um, but yeah, and I, I bought them, and I uh, I use them for a, a sci-fi game that me and a friend had written at the time. So and we we kind of it was desert theme, so I painted them in desert camouflage. But I thought um, it'd be interesting to take a look at these and just see what the casting quality is like, uh, and contrast them to you know. As a we looked at Anvil Industries um, recently, so I thought it'd be good to look at these as well. So here we go. Um, I mean, one of, I don't know if these were sculpted in particular, but um, I know some of the Crymet models were sculpted by um, Bob Naismith, uh, and I think there were a few Games Workshop guys who got involved in the project. Um, but they had a nice, distinct look to them, you know. And you can, as you can see, the detail is very good. I mean, in particular, you can see this, um, these like. Uh, seams perhaps running down the legs with the dotted detail on that looks really uh, really neat Oops. at the time i was obviously feeling a bit star wars inspired so i went for the uh, the strepsil style uh, rank insignia but these guys were these like were were super heavy <laughs> um troopers uh, armed with, you know, they had heavy weapons. Some of them had power hands, and then they also came with grenade launchers. So they were they, these guys were 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 the best of the best, and clearly a bit Terminator inspired, but a lot shootier than Terminators were. But yeah, these were. I I mean, what I remember about these guys is um, the resin they were casting was extremely hard. So if you ever if you ever bought resin models, particularly earlier ones, the the earlier types of resin was was really rather hard and it was brit it was quite brittle to work with and you had to be careful and a couple of these I broke the legs off when I was taking them out of the the frame that they were cast in um, but that said they were the detail on them was lovely and they they really do well they really did and they continue to look the part Focus. There we go. I mean, I painted these, well, it must be nearly 25 years ago. So, quite a long time since I painted these. I, I got to admit, I didn't pick out anywhere near the amount of detail I could have done on these because I was feeling very camo. Another set of Crymate models I did, I painted in white. They were in armored armored sealed suits, but I painted them in white sealed suits, and I picked the, lots of the detail on those, and they look really good. 
I mean, I think looking back on these, the casting quality was pretty decent. There were some mold lines. They weren't mold slips, but they were mold lines that ran around the model. And I do remember that they were, they took, it took me ages to take them all off um, because the resin was so incredibly hard. It was really difficult to work with. Um, but that said, the end result was good. And I certainly, there were no, there was nothing, there were no miscasts at all. I mean, they were very, they were very well cast. Uh, I put a lot of time into them. Um, and yeah, no, they're good models and they're still good today. I mean, I suppose you could potentially use these as a grenadiers in a survivors of a dark age of technology militia list. They've probably got the right sort of look. They did come with these um, goofy sergeants. Um, the heads were ridiculously side. I mean, if I get one of the, I converted mine. The head, the sergeant's unhelmeted head was bigger than a head with a helmet on. So I cut them down and just turned them into sort of, as if they got sort of like uh, fabric cowls around their heads, which looks so so. It was all right, but. Um, yeah, so I wasn't very keen on the uh, the unhelmeted heads because of the proportions. Uh, let's have a look at another one. Yeah, and they came with a wide variety of weapons. Um, I must have, I must have sold more, but I had a, you got loads of alternate weapon arms because you got a big variety of different weapons you could give the guys. Um, so I must have sold on or given away or something at some point, all the spares. But yeah, I mean, but just going back to look at these in detail, I mean, you know, there's certainly no evidence of mold slips. You know, you know the, the mold lines that were there, I, I removed, as I said. So, you know, these were so an interesting experiment in models and in, yeah. And so these go back, what, 25 years. So it goes to show that even even back then, the techniques were around to cast resin models in, in very high quality. And, you know, and, and that was, I mean, for sci-fi models, I think it was quite rare at the time, but there was, a, um, was, there was a burgeoning market in modification parts for particularly military tank modeling, uh, which used the same sort of hard resin. Um, and from the parts I, I saw at that time, I never remember seeing any sort of really bad the cast or mold slipped or air bubble pieces so yeah yeah so an interesting an interesting little trip down memory lane there um of some very early sci-fi resin um miniatures and uh rare ones as well um a couple of a year back i think i saw the original an unbuilt resin, resin box set on ebay and it was in really good nick, and I'd thought about buying it at the time. I think it would probably cost, ended up probably costing about 40, 45 pounds. Uh, I think the, so I'd have had to beat the highest bidder, which it went to about, I think it went to about 30 quid. Um, but I'm kind of having a little pang of regret now that I didn't, didn't buy it because it would have been very interesting to have uh, used in this ser series. But anyway, I've still got these guys. So yeah, um, I hope you found that interesting. Let me know what you think of these um, oddities of the. Um, Oddities of Crimec, the uh, Predator Swap Marines. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for listening. I will speak to you next time, and goodbye.